Hi guys and welcome to ASFN Fishing and thank you for watching and following our channel. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you don't have a Google account, it won't allow you to subscribe. So it's free creating your Google account, which is an email address and log on details. So you can log on to Google and then subscribe to the channel. This allows you to push that little notification bell button and choose the frequency of when you want to receive notifications when we upload videos. ASFN loads videos every day Monday to Friday educational videos sharing tips and tricks to get you better results in fishing a lot of this content all our content or most of our content is done on the South African coastline which works similar to a lot of other countries uh, being the east coast of America the east coast of Australia New Zealand a lot of similar species a lot of the methods apply to all those species. So please let us know if you use any of our methods, baits or traces and get results with them. And send those results and photos to grindylit at asfn.co.za. And uh, yes guys, any suggestions, put them in the comments. We do read them and we try and get to them as soon as we can. Now guys, what I'm covering today is a duck ball bait for the infamous duck ball, one of our really stronger fighting flatfish and a beautiful, beautiful fish to catch. A really strong fighter, clean fighter most of the time. If you catch them in reefy areas where they do feed close to reefy and rocky areas as well, but we do get them on the banks. Uh, but in the reefy areas it can be foul, so you fish obviously heavier, thicker leaders, thicker line. Summer months um, in the Eastern Cape, Southern Cape, um, Western Cape, whole, whole east coast of uh, all the whole coast of Natal, a lot of them come around in the summer months. A really nice fish to target, definitely should be on your list if you haven't caught one. Now guys, I'm just going to show you about now the thing with them is you'll, you'll hook them on a mackerel, you'll hook them on a sardine, you'll hook them on a red eye. There's several baits they will pick up, but they do favor octopus. So a small baby octopus or a medium octopus, if you can get that out on a slide bait, a drone bait or a cast bait, is first prize, as well as chocker baits. They love chocker baits. Now these baits will also catch the, the really spectacular eagle rays, the black spotted eagle rays, which there's a lot on our coastline as well, feeding close to reefy areas and certain banks. Lovely fish to catch as well, as strong and known to jump several times. Um, uh, we do see them off the coast, you can see them jump sometimes very much inshore, close to the shore we see them jump, really a strong fish. So this bait applies specifically for a, for a duck bull, but the eagle rays will definitely pick them up. Now the nature of this bait will allow any big cob, um, uh, as known in, in Australia as a mulloway, will definitely not swim past this bait. It's a lovely bait with movement, a lot of smell, and it's chocker, it's what they love. All right, so let's start with that, guys. I'm first going to make. I haven't done the the the, the dangle yet. I'm going to make this on a dangle. So I've cut my foam one piece, and I've stuck the the piano wire, double piano wire, and a loop right through already, because I want to. And I'm using those rubber beads, rubber kingfisher beads, just to secure it, and then the the braided uh, cord. It's pretty much old Dacron. Uh, you can buy a couple of meters from most tackle stores. You just ask them for 10 meters or 20 meters, whatever you want, and they charge you per meter. Then just use a lighter to make sure it doesn't unravel. And then we're going to pull that right through to just uh, create our dangle. No, I didn't push it flat when I burnt it. It's got a little hit there. Okay, all right. Now this just makes it easy to pull it right through and secure it properly. That it doesn't come off okay which one to pull all right then a bead onto the other side There you have it. Okay, then these little welded rings you get in the tackle shops. They're a bit bigger than this and this is to clip your sink on if you want it for casting. Also to hold the dangle not to, to slide off the cord and yeah I definitely use a figure of eight as that will hold it. 
when I hook a sink I'll put the weight for casting onto this all right let's tie a normal figure of eight there sure. Done. pull that down onto the rim Okay, then we pull this down and we estimate how long we want this. Alright, and that's where we're going to make the knot. We want a fairly, and you'll see why I'm, I'm leaving a bit of extra here because I'm using the chocker head, which frequently we throw away, but an absolutely great bait. Okay, and that's just the double surgeons. I've tied there. Clip it above the knot. Melt it again. And there's our dangle. Now for this particular one, I want to give it a bit more body. But you see, I cut my foam a bit sharper to the bottom because you want that aerodynamica in the water. And I'm going to use ghost cotton for this. It's just longer lasting. Where's the tagging? I'm sure all of you would agree with me that one of the most frustrating parts of cotton is on the beach. It's never going to be that easy to put it back in because the wind's blowing, the, your hands are full of bait or whatever, and then the cotton decides to slip out. All right, now what's nice about the ghost cotton on this is the foam's got a bit of a. Obviously, you can push it down and it makes it nice and tight. That gives it a lot of buoyancy as well. So it will allow for a lot of movement. That's what a, a chocker in its natural environment moves around. It's got all those moving parts, the tentacles. So you want to imitate that and you want to create a bit of movement. So I like putting foam. And I push it nice and tight when I tie it like this. And then because ghost cotton doesn't have stretch, okay, it doesn't the knot doesn't come out as nice as what I wanted to. You can always just round it off, and of course, <laughs> that's how it's going to work today. Put a bit of uh, latex cotton around that, just to tie it off nicely. And that will make sure that ghost cotton doesn't unravel as easily because of that knot. All right, now ghost cotton, guys, it's up to you. The thing about ghost cotton is the pickers don't get it off as easily and don't get your bait off as easily as what they do with latex. If a toothy critter is to bite latex, it shoots off the bait and your bait can come off your hook. So like I showed in previous bait demos, you can do your first couple of layers with ghost cotton. Um, so you've got a base bait that will stay on longer and then the outside if you're layering you do that with uh, with latex purely for for presentation all right now this part gosh this is such a important part this as well in this particular case i'm going to show you guys how to use a bit of the the ink sack a lot of smell and flavor in there you'll see a lot of chef programs actually use them uh, when they do uh, calamari dishes they actually make a sauce with the ink sack it's got a very strong flavor to it. Now, you've noticed I pulled the, the, the beak out. Chocolate's got a little beak there. All right, we'll put that there. But tonight's food It's dinner. No choke. All right, so then this is a bit of a big head. It's a, well, it's a small head, but a bit too big for the bait I want to make. All right, so I'm going to halve it. If you've got those smaller chockers, you can put the whole thing which is lovely it makes it just more natural so in this case let's just cut half of it and I'm gonna leave those intestines handy now your hooks going on the top here 
So we're going to do that and that allows us to cast it better. All right, so there's a piece of unnecessary tough chocker that doesn't add to our bait. For the presentation and then we're going to tie that. We're going to cut it to length. And then secure it with a cotter okay. onto the foam. Now the foam helps holding that bait in place because the cotton's going around the foam as well. And that's why I made the tag a bit longer as you guys can see. I want to actually tie it onto that as well. You can make it shorter and put your hook through the head. I often do that. Okay. Then just pass the eye so that I can stand out a bit. I'm going to tie it onto my braided cord and back again. Alright, so that eye stands nice and out. A lot of guys, oh, I make the same mistake. I sometimes make my dangle too long, so I make a hell of a long bait. It's not necessary, guys. You don't have to do that. All right, there we go. So we've got that, step one. Now out of your chocker, there's a nice thick chocker. And I can cut a long strip like that. And I'm just gonna cut these corners off. That's just preference, for sure. And then tough skin, tough side of the skin to the outside. So when I hit it, it's gonna mush up. Right. Now everything's going to bounce a bit. See how the bottom pushes out. If you hit it like that, the bottom starts pushing out. It's mushing that whole bottom up, but your skin's not breaking. Okay, this make sure you your chocker hammer you use is not too sharp. Otherwise, just hit it on a rock. Mush that up. base to the bait. Now the thing with chocker when you're going to use it like that and you're going to lay it to make your bait neater spend some time on the edges to get it thinner on the edges. It will allow to allow you to tie a much neater bait. Okay. You see that's almost see-through how I mushed it. The reason I do that now that snotty side the soft side we're going to put to the outside. It takes nice to the cotton it just gets the flavor out. It makes it a nice natural soft bait. Now this is the base of this bait. So I want it to cover nicely. And that's our bottom layer. All that flavor underneath allowing the slow dispersion of the flavor. Because over this I'm going to add some layers. Even this is still long. Uh, a long body bait. You can make it shorter if you want little bit <laughs> okay now here it doesn't matter the amount of cotton because the more cotton you're gonna put the more it will push out the flavor but make that bottom sturdy all right now we start layering One more layer and this I don't tie too much I wanted to create that soft body now when it picks it up it will not suspect much foul play that's when I'm gonna make a bit wider and a bit more rounded and I don't like that okay and then let's cut 
cut the last piece as well. A thinner piece. Put. And again, remember the edges. Spend a little extra time on the edges. And then work your way in. See how that becomes all mushed up. So nice. Ready to be eaten. Now, normally the duck bills feed in that slightly off color northeast water when, uh, when the water starts churning a bit. Which uh, wants you to worry more about flavor, dispersion in the water, than what you're worried about visual. So this is a lot of flavor in this bait. But it's also got movement, which they can detect, and a cob can detect. But it's got all that flavor that's going into the water. Okay guys, now there's two ways to fish this. I tie this on and that's my bait. And I fish it plain. Just that big white bait in the water. And then the other thing is to add a bit of this. The, the ink sack, which has got a lot of flavor. Okay, now you stick that. First you're gonna rub it all over your bait. Yeah. I want it to explode in the water. I want this to form a cloud around this thing of flavor going into that water, driving every fish in the vicinity's heads towards us. You can take that whole ink sack and just push it in, push a bit in, yeah? And an eagle loves this if you put the ink sack on. Very good eagle bait. And then remember I've turned it around so this is the soft side and I'm not hitting it as hard I just want this ink to go into this chocker stay there that's the one that will disperse slowly because I'm gonna cover it with this so that's gonna create that blue cloud and this one on the outside will keep a bit of flavor or keep the flavor a little bit longer but also assist in creating that initial cloud in the beginning and personally this is where I take a bit more time to put my cotton nice and neat and that's just any self-respecting angler would even if the water is brown want to put a little decent looking bait um, I must confess I don't always put a decent bait sometimes you just want to get a bait in the water quite eager to get the bite so you just slam it onto your hook but this just keeps the shape now if you notice I've added pretty much a whole almost a whole chocker onto this half a head and then here we just tie it off nicely so it's sharp and makes it more streamlined for the casting here you can put a bit more cotton so you're shaping it the sinker will be in the bottom so that's going to go through the air like that it just adds with that streamliners and that's where I'm going to hook my hook through I'll be using a tenna circle hook a tuna mustard tuna circle hook for this in fact, I've got a trace here with a 10 j hook. So basically, all you're going to do is you're going to find the middle of that. You're going to hook it through the middle of this cord. Like that. Anywhere beneath the knot. But try and find the middle so there's enough strength and then just push it over the bar 
some of these bulbs are big you can squash the bulb a little and that's your bait guys now you see that hangs quite far so what I sometimes do I'll measure it and put one of the tentacles through like that you've still got that long one for casting purpose you take this long one and you wrap it around your hook that will unwrap itself in the water and there you go for the sinker oh, a bit of a storm coming and that for casting is perfect very natural looking a lot of flavor right shape they're not going to swim past that as you know duckbill and eagle ray has got a big mouth they swallow they will take this into their mouth quite easily this whole size so nothing wrong with this bait going straight there you can add a bit of meat underneath like a bit of mackerel or before you put the last layers of chocka but this specific bait i wanted to show you guys a very very popular and a very very effective bait for catching duck bull eagle rays and trust me a cob will not swim past that a decent sized cob even a three kilo cob will, will swallow this quite easily so guys there you have it that's this week's bait demo and uh, i want to thank you guys again for watching for every one of you that subscribed and pushed the notification button that assists in the algorithms for us to grow and uh when we grow, it allows us to make more content for you guys, share more information so that you can get better results. Maybe we're going to have a bite out of this, put it in the pan quickly and sear it. Um, but thanks again for watching and we'll see you soon again.